Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Thank you, Lord. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands in worship as we lift your holy name. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. For you are great. You do miracles so great. There is no one else like you. There is no one else like you. You know, he deserves the glory, the honor. <laughs> He's worthy. He's worthy of it all. There's a song called He's Worthy of It All. And he is worthy of it all. He's worthy of our lives. He's worthy of our time. He's worthy of our thought lives. He's worthy of our finances. He's worthy of whatever boat we might have. We use it, our boat or our house or our, our property. He's worthy. And any time you allow him to use something of yours, that you allow him room in your boat, or you allow him room in your house, and you allow him room, hallelujah, he will come in and he will sup with you. <laughs> the Lord says, I, I stand this morning at the door. Amen? And he said, if you'll open it, I'll come in and I'll sup with you. That means he'll sit and he'll talk with you. And, you know, when you have people over for dinner, it's not just about a meal. It's about fellowship. And the Lord says, I'll sup with you. I'll sit with you. And I'll have fellowship with you. I'll talk with you about my word. I will, I will speak to you from my word. I will, I will give you good things. The Bible says in Psalm 103 that he satisfies our mouth with good. So that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. So he himself will satisfy us with good. So that our youth is renewed like the eagles. Amen. Hallelujah. He is, he is the same yesterday, today, and forever. The, Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power. And he went about through his earthly life. Or most of his earthly life he spent... Laying hands on the sick, casting out devils, and uh, and ministering to the sick, and it says the the Bible says that he was anointed with Jesus was anointed with the Holy Ghost and power, and he went about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil. Now sickness is oppression. You can be oppressed. The devil <laughs> he comes with sickness, okay? So it didn't come from Jesus. But he has the keys. He's given us authority to trample on those bites, on those attacks of the enemy that try to come against us, to assail us, to keep us from the things, the life and the destiny that he has for us. And so we need to know by the Spirit what we resist, oh, hallelujah, and um, you, so we need to resist the devil. That's what another scripture in Peter says. Resist, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, under his power, and then resist the devil, and he will flee. Amen. And so we humble ourselves. It's not our strength. Huh? We humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, and we resist the devil. So right now, in the name of Jesus, we resist every satanic assignment that has been set against you 
to buffet you, to keep you, to keep you pushed back so that you don't propel and go forward with the kingdom of God. Whatever is hindering your, your prosperity, whatever is hindering your spiritual progress, right now in the name of Jesus, we bind it in the name of Jesus and we cast you out in Jesus' name, send you back to hell where you belong, and we receive deliverance in Jesus' name. We receive the peace of God. We receive deliverance. Hallelujah. We receive healing. We receive prosperity. Whatever has been holding up your finances right now in the name of Jesus, we receive it. We receive the finances that need to come forth for your ministry, for the, your children, for your family, those things in the name of Jesus. We call those in. In the name of Jesus, and we thank you for them, and we receive them by faith. Amen? We receive them. It is by faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Uh, it says in Isaiah 53 that if you, if you believe the report, the arm of the Lord will be out to you. You can have what you believe, but if you don't believe it, even though you know that is a scripture, if you don't believe it, the arm of the Lord can't move for you. But we know that you believe. And so the arm of the Lord is going to be revealed for you. Amen. Over that circumstance or that situation in your life. We began at 5 this morning. We started and we began with um, Isaiah 61. And I think it's good to know that the spirit, what the spirit of the Lord looks like. Because we can sometimes miss what the spirit of the Lord what he's doing, what he's always intending to do. And, of course, when Jesus came into the synagogue, he began to speak uh, from the book of Isaiah. He began to turn to the, this part in the, the book of Isaiah, and he began to preach this. Hallelujah. And um, But it's a good one to go back to for ourselves that we uh, realize that the Lord, this spirit, is. this is what his spirit is up here to do upon mankind. And it says the spirit of the Lord God is upon you. It is upon us. It is upon us to release to people. Amen. But it is also upon us for our own personal need. Hallelujah. That you get to eat. You get to eat. As you, the Bible says, do not muzzle the ox as they tread the grain. You get to eat what you preach. So if you're preaching judgment, guess what? You get to eat of that judgment too. So you want to preach what you want to eat. Hallelujah. If you need healing, you want to meditate on healing scriptures. If you need to prosper, if you need deliverance, you want to be meditating on delivering scriptures. Amen. Get a few. You don't have to have a lot. I love the Word, so I'm always adding more scriptures and more scriptures because I want to know more. I want to know. I, I might not need that, that verse today, but the Holy Spirit might click in it for me tomorrow. That might be my living Word. That might be my life Word for that for tomorrow. So Isaiah 61 says, The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has empowered me anointed me to preach. And what is it we're going to preach? Hell and damnation? We're going to preach good tidings to the meek, to those that are pliable. You can preach to some people and they're not pliable. They're not meek. They don't want to hear it. But he sent Jesus to, and anointed Jesus to preach good tidings to the meek. He also sent him to bind up broken hearts. The woman at the well. The woman uh, that had the seven devils cast out of her. Mary Magdalene. Amen. The woman caught in adultery. Right? He sent him to, he, he was sent to bind up broken hearts. He didn't address, he didn't beat them up over the sin. He brought the anointing to set them free. Amen? So he binds up broken hearts. We want to bind up. But we, in, in our own natural ability as people, 
with the filet of love that we have, we can't touch the deep depths of a person's soul. Only the Holy Spirit, only the anointing of God can go in and make it as if that didn't happen. Amen? The Bible says that he's able to save us to the uttermost. Amen? He is able to save us, Jesus, because again, Jesus is above time, so he can go back into time and reverse and make it as if that situation didn't happen. That's the spirit of the Lord. That's not me. That's not somebody. That is the spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, able to go in to erase, to eradicate something that happened, be able to go where the knife of man can't go. And this is the Holy Spirit, the anointing. And it is here. It is available for you today, right now in your home, to bind up the broken heart and to proclaim freedom or liberty to the captives. I'm not going to call you an addict. I'm going to call you delivered from that addiction in the name of Jesus. We're called to call, we are told to call those things that be not as though they were. If you keep calling yourself sick, if you keep calling yourself bound, you're going to stay bound. But the Spirit of the Lord is here. Amen. And He is able and He is willing and able to set you at liberty. Amen. The thing is, is that daily we're being healed. Daily I take my healing. I was healed yesterday, but guess what? There's going to be a, there might be a bite of the enemy that comes at me tomorrow. And so you know what? I have to walk and take my healing afresh tomorrow. Amen. I have, I need it today. He daily, see the Bible says in uh, Psalm 68, he daily loads you with benefits. Guess what? I get a supply of benefits today. He's got a truckload. How big do you think those benefits are? See, it's all in your mind. Do you believe that he has good benefits for you? Do you believe that how big is your truckload of benefits coming your way today? Some of you might see yourself with a little kid's little truck, you know, like a little Hot Wheels with a little truck. That's all the benefit packet. That's all the benefits you think that are, you're loaded with today that are coming your way. But you know what? You believe them for a, 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 you know, a crate. What do they call those things that come off the boats that they drop the big um, duck craters? They're, they're big um, units, you know, the pod, like the pods now, they drop them. How big is your benefit? Is it a 20-yard benefit? You know, the 20-yard containers that are on trucks that, that, that haul debris away. Well, guess what? God's got huge benefits. He's got 40. He's got 40 yards of benefits for you today. His mercies are new every morning. So you may have tapped them out yesterday. You're never going to tap them. But guess what? You get a fresh new load this morning. Hallelujah. Grace. Amen. A grace. Amen. Oh, what a grace that we have. And Jesus, has he, oh, Jesus, we thank you, Jesus, that your strength is made perfect in our weakness. Your strength is shows up when we know we're at the end of us, that you have to meet us, amen, and you do. Your grace abounds, amen. It is abounding towards you this morning. It's abounding. So the Spirit of the Lord and the, the loading of benefits towards you. He's not mad at you. Some people are constantly in condemnation thinking they, they've offended God, but they forget that, that Jesus, upon Jesus was laid the iniquity of us all. There, that iniquity is willful acts of disobedience. That's powerful. He laid upon God laid upon Jesus 
the iniquity of us all. Amen? So he took our iniquities, those willful knowing that we shouldn't have done it, but did it anyway. He took those and paid the price. You are never going to be able to pay the price for your sin. Only one sacrifice was going to be able to cover. Only one perfect sacrifice. Jesus, the perfect lamb, had no sin. Oh, was that no sin was the perfect. He, that, that blood of the Old Testament would cover for a year, but it never covered inside, never changed the inside, just absolved the sin outwardly, but never dealt with the inside. But the Spirit of the Lord binds up the broken heart and makes it new. Amen. Frees you from the from the from the fire like the, the, the three the three men in the fiery furnace. When they came out, they did not smell like smoke. They were delivered through the fire. The fourth man was with them in that fiery furnace. Amen. He's with you. He's with me. He never leaves us. One of his names is Jehovah Shammah, Shammah, the Lord present. The Lord is there. Amen. The Lord is there. Even in your valley of decision, in your valley of weaknesses, the Lord, Jehovah Shammah, is there for you. Amen. He is there he is there. You just have to place that demand. So the Spirit of the Lord, he binds up the broken heart. He proclaims the freedom to the captives. The opening of the prison to them that have been bound. The doors are open for you to freely leave that prison in your mind today. There's a man that we, a dear friend of ours, uh, in, uh, in the area who's been having an air, a, a problem with depression. The Spirit of the Lord God is here to, sign, to set him free, to let him know he can go out of that prison in his mind into the light of the glorious gospel. I have been praying for the light. That came up several times this morning in prayer. Praying for the light of the gospel to shine in in situations. The light the light of the, it's, his light is so bright. It's, it, it works like a laser. It's to shine into the dark regions uh, of people's minds. So we release right now in the name of Jesus the light of the glorious gospel to shine in if you have an area of depression. Father, we speak the light of the glorious gospel to shine into your mind today, to shine in and to eradicate Whatever is going on that is short, that is that is changing your thoughts and, and that you're holding and exalting. Father, you know the mind. You know the person's mind. You know how that brain works. And you are the Lord of all. And so, Father, we speak to that mind that 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 be whole in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus Christ, the name of all names. We proclaim, the Spirit of the Lord proclaims the acceptable year. He proclaims that you've been accepted. Your debt's been paid through the blood of Jesus. And you're accepted with God because of that. You didn't have to do a thing. But accept Jesus. Repent. And part of repentance is acknowledging that Jesus is Lord and I humble myself Lord, and I repent that it is not me that can do this, but you. And so I receive this morning, I receive salvation because you said, if I will confess with my mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in my heart that he has raised, he has been raised from the dead, I shall be saved. Do you believe that? Do you believe Jesus came? Do you believe that he paid the price for you? 
and me? Do you believe it in your heart? Have you acknowledged him? Well, then you're saying you it believed it, and you believe it in here, not just here. It's got to come here. Hallelujah. You shall be saved. And that salvation is Zoe. Salvation means Zoe. Zoe is life. So salvation is whatever you need. Whatever salvation is to you today, is it deliverance, is it healing, is it prosperity, anything that is lacking in you, that salvation, the Spirit of the Lord is upon you for you to have that salvation, that deliverance. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. And he comforts those that are mourning. God is the one that comforts those that are brokenhearted. But you can be comforted in your mourning, but never get free. You can pick up a spirit of grief in, a, in going through a hard time. And that is actually a spirit that can kind of make you feel, can kind of, can really consume you. You can, you can be crying, you can be in a fetal mood, you know, in a fetal position, and you could just be sobbing. But you want to be careful that you're not receiving that spirit of grief because it leads to death. God didn't give us grief, he gave us joy. And, and so, but those that cry out, God's going to comfort those that mourn, and, and we pray for those that mourn. But through those that cry out to Zion, he promises that he will do an exchange. That's the difference. He can comfort those that are going to mourn. But when you cry out to God, when you cry out to Zion, you humble yourself, he says to you, I'll make some exchanges. I'll give you beauty for your ashes. How can that be that out of something that was totally burned up, something that was totally destroyed, that God says, I can make a beautiful thing out of it? That's the spirit of the Lord when you cry out to God. He says, I'll give you oil for the for oil for mourning. I'll take that mourning and I'll replace it with joy. This is a joy that doesn't come from outward. It comes from on high. This is an anointing that is available for you and I to tap into. Amen. You know, there's several times that there's no, I can't talk to anybody about a situation. And I'll, I'll start to think, maybe I can call this person. Well, maybe I could call it, the Lord's like, there's not any of those people that are going to answer you on this. He made it that way for you. It's, there's going to be a time you're just going to have to go right to the Father, and you're going to have to place a demand, and you're going to say, I am not going to let go until you answer me on this. Amen. And it might not be a, to you, my what I need him to answer me on may not be so seem to be so important to you, but we desire to stay in the will in the perfect divine plan and purpose he has for us. And so even making a decision of moving or buying something or doing something that could alter our attention, we have to hear from the Lord. Amen. Because even a good thing, even a great thing, you know, even a good thing cannot, could be a deterrent, could detour you from God's very best for you. So because he's not, the devil's not going to um, come with us with, with evil things, but things that look good, but are going to redirect us, okay? But only God himself, only you get to the mountain. You and God, you, like Moses, you go to the mountain and you say, God, I need to hear from you concerning this. I need to hear. I need, I am waiting for you to hear, to speak to me. Go, don't go, go forward, stay back. Uh, yes, go with all, all your heart, whatever it is, but you have to, there's not going to, it's not going to, Never going to be a, a, a replacement of hearing from God yourself. 
And, and he is, like I said, Jehovah Shammah, the Lord that is present. He's with you. The Lord is there. Amen. And it says, I'm going to give you a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness. So these are things he'll give you. You'll be able to praise him in the, in the, in the heaviness that's coming against you. And, and then he says, when you do these things, you will be my oaks of righteousness. There are things that happen, storms that come, and that those oaks, they stand, the winds blow, maybe they'll lose a branch, but they stand strong. And, he, and the squirrels get to go under them, and we get to sit under the shade, and, and they are rooted and grounded deep. In Jesus, in the word, in the ground, those oaks. And you and we are oaks of righteousness, plantings of the Lord, that he might be glorified. And we also, when we do go through a testing, when we do go through a stepping up, where he says, I want you to grab a hold of healing. I want to, I'm going to take you to another place in healing. I want you to, but when we come out it is to testify of how what God taught us. How, I tell you, when we went through the famine of that seven years where we had to believe God for dinner, we had to believe God for cash because we had no credit cards. We had no credit. We had no credit cards. We had no money coming in because the business that we had ceased. And we had to believe God. Hallelujah. We had to believe God. I tell you, we spent a lot, of, a lot of, a uh, lot of Sundays or a lot of shopping days were at the Dollar Tree because we had to go to. We went to the Dollar. There's nothing wrong with the Dollar Tree, Hallelujah! But we knew we needed to count every dollar. We needed to make sure we had that we watched every dollar. God taught us things in that period of famine. He taught us some different situations. He taught us how to be content in, with or without. The Bible says, in, you know, with Paul, he says, I know how to abound, and I know how to abase. Hallelujah. We learned, maybe we learned, I mean, because we had, I personally had never been through ever a season in my life where I had no car. I joke, I joke, they repossessed my car. I joke, you know, I went from a Bentley to a bike. The kids, you know, they needed the truck, you know, so I, I would ride my bike. We had another building at the time until that got taken. <laughs> I ride my bike over to the church, you know, uh, by faith. I did what I could by faith. Hallelujah. I kept moving by faith. You keep going forward. Thank you, Jesus. And he taught us. I remember when I was out praying. And I was declared, I started to speak over the, the ravens that day. And I told them to go and bring me the treasures of darkness and the hidden riches in secret places. Instead of, you know, instead of rebuking them, I started to command them. I remember the day that they dropped that piece of bread out of their towels. It was fresh bread. <laughs> I mean, fresh from it, fresh, whole wheat bread about that big. Hallelujah. They dropped for me. They like the prophet. God will feed you supernaturally. I tell you, I jumped, I leaped, I praise the Lord. He wanted me to know that even in the midst of a drought, even in the midst of a season, even in the midst of a famine, even when it doesn't look like you have anything, God will bring you through and he will provide supernaturally. I tell you, I held that. I still have some of the crumbs in my prayer thing. <laughs> My prayer notebook, <laughs> but it's disintegrated because this was several years ago. But that happened during the famine, that famine, that time where we had. But we pressed in in prayer. We pressed in and how do we find seed? He had to teach us. He had to show us how we could sow seed for seed. We even how we had to sow. We had to find out how we had to keep sowing. So we had to. What seed do I have? What do I have? Do we have furniture? Do we have 
I mean, I remember one day I was saying, Lord, I want to sow to this generation. And I have no money, but I want it. I was out praying over there. And I was just crying out to God, Lord, send me a young person that I could sow into the youth of this nation, you know. And uh, later that day, a friend came over and she said, I want you to meet this young girl. Can I bring her over with my daughter? I'm like, okay. <laughs> you know, <laughs> okay. <laughs> so she came over. And I tell you, that young girl was what I was praying for. Thank you, Jesus. But then I said, Lord, I don't have any seed. Oh, Lord. I don't have any seed to sow into this girl. And the Lord reminded me of $60 that I had put away that I was saving up. And he showed me he reminded me I had that because he missed to see to the sower. Thank you, Lord. And I went in upstairs. It was in my drawer. I went in and I'm like, oh, God, thank you. Because I had been holding it. I just kind of forgot I had it. I had it so long waiting. And the Lord said, that's the seed. That's where I want you to sow into this young woman's life. Thank you, Jesus. He knows your prayers. He will respond. He will give you seed. Hallelujah. He will respond. He'll show you things you forgot you had. But again, during that season, we had very little cash. And, and so, you know, you know, related to today, you know, that may not seem like that much. But it's all relative. If you won't be able to give you know, $60 in a difficult time. You won't be able, you won't give 600000 in a time of abundance. You see, it always starts the same way. You've got to be willing. But he says that if you be willing and obedient, you will eat the fruit of the land. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon us to, to bind up, to set at liberty those that are held captive, to to when we become oaks of righteousness and we build up and we build up the waste of many generations, we have prosperity. There's a progression of prosperity from the anointing, amen, in this chapter of Isaiah. You will have increase. You won't have decrease. You will have increase. He opens the windows of heaven and pours you out a blessing as I've been pleased to be able to be reacquainted with Sister Grace. I've heard of stories of the seeds of teaching and how God has grown up her teaching. She taught our children, but she went to a university as a professor at a university and, and did that for a season. And then God called her to another level of teaching, to special needs. Hallelujah. You know, with each one, the Lord is taking us from glory to glory, from strength to strength. He's building. He is, and he's the one that sees. He's our boy. He sees our attitudes. He sees, um, you know, we really, we want those that are, are um, as it says here in, the, um, the meek, this morning as we were praying, the, the people were out working on our roof. And we went out and I said to one of the women on the prayer line, I said, would you pray for these Spanish people? Because she's Spanish. And I said, would you pray for them? Pray for them for us, you know? And she prayed in Spanish. This most, the, the, the most beautiful prayer over these, this couple that have been building our house, you know, working on our roof, beautiful family, and they so received, amen, he will send you to the meek. Sometimes you might be teaching the wrong people, but I tell you, I would like to go to the meek. I don't care what color they are. I don't care what nation they're from. I just want someone that will receive Jesus, that will receive 
the word of God will take him in and receive it. And when we pray this morning, those of us that have been called out to minister in, and you are all of us in Jesus are ambassadors. Okay, so we are ambassadors of reconciling men to God. So no matter who you are, you are called to be an ambassador for Christ, making our plea, his plea, we make the plea for God, amen? And so in Isaiah 52, I want you, uh, just another passage that we prayed this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. There's some things that you'll have to shake off. Awake, awake into who you are in Christ Jesus and put on the strength of Zion. Put on your beautiful garments that came from God with full armor. Put them on, put it on. O Jerusalem, the holy city, for henceforth there shall no more come to you the uncircumcised and the unclean. Shake yourself, get the dust off, arise, come on and sit down, O Jerusalem, loose yourself. Sometimes you have to sit down and loose some of that stuff off of you. Hallelujah. Loose yourself from the neck, you ca o captive daughter of Zion. For thus says the Lord, you've sold yourself for nothing. You shall be redeemed without money. Amen? If you sold yourself for nothing, you'll be redeemed without. God has favor for you. Favor is worth more than money. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. For thus says the Lord, my people went down to G Egypt, sojourned, and the Assyrians oppressed them without a cause. Now, therefore, what have I here, says the Lord, that my people have been taken away, and they that rule over them are making them howl? And the, and the Lord, uh, 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 how, says the Lord, and my name is blasphemed every day. God isn't going to allow his name to be blasphemed and his people to be kept in bondage and put under forever. He says, therefore, my people that shall know my name, they shall know in that day that I am, I am, he, I speak. Behold, it's I. Hallelujah. You will know it's him. Amen. How beautiful upon the mountain are the feet of him that bring good tidings, that publish peace, that bring good tidings of good, that publish salvation, that says a desire. Your God reigns. We need to encourage each other. Not about all the bad things, but our God reigns. Our God reigns. Hallelujah. Our God reigns. Our God reigns. You need to tell your, uh, your friend, God reigns. God, I don't know what's going on there, but our God reigns. He's above all this. We're, we're seated with him in heavenly places. Oh, hallelujah. Your watchmen, they will lift up their, their voice, and the voice together will they sing, for they shall, you will see eye to eye when you start to praise God and you start to magnify him. You will begin to see the miracles. You'll begin to see the supernatural. You will see eye to eye what the Lord will do when he brings again Zion. So break forth you, us, me. Break forth in your joy. Sing together. You that have been wasted of Jerusalem. Hallelujah. The, for the Lord, he's comforted his people. And he, he himself has redeemed Jerusalem. He is going to make bear his holy arm in the eyes of all nations. He is going to show forth his arm, the holy arm of the Lord before all the nations. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the eyes of all the nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. So depart, head out, depart, go you out from there. Don't touch the unclean. Go you out of the midst of her and be clean. You that bear the vessels of the Lord. Hallelujah. For you will not go out with haste, nor go by flight, for the Lord 
He is going to go before you in this situation. He is the Lord that is there. Amen? Hallelujah. He's the Lord that is there. He's going before you. We look, when we go to a city, when we go, has the Lord been there ahead of us? Has the Lord done this for me? You know, there's things that, that I like. There's things that I think are pretty. And of them, I might not um, spend a lot of time getting those things or acquiring those things. I appreciate nice fabrics. I appreciate when I go into somebody's home and, and they have, have it nicely decorated. I appreciate that. And I, I marvel at, at talent and how people can do that. And uh, But I might not spend my time doing it. But I appreciate the, that the gift of an anointing on somebody in that area. And God knows what we like. And as we sow to him, he takes care of those things that we like. Amen? And so he's going to give you goodly houses built that you did not build, filled with goodly things that you did not fill. Amen? Goodly houses that you did not build, Filled with goodly things that you did not buy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's a promise. Thank you, Jesus. It's goodly. Goodly. Amen. The Lord is making bare his holy arm. In the eyes of all nations and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of God. So go out from there. Don't touch the unclean things. Go out of the midst of her and be clean, you that bear the vessels of the Lord, the, the holy things, the vessels of the Lord, and the things that pertain to walking in holiness. For you shall not go out with haste nor flight, for the Lord will go before you, and the God of Israel will be your rear guard, your re reward. Hallelujah, your rear guard. Glory. To God. Thank you, Jesus. We just thank you that you've been Grace's rear guard, that you've been my rear guard. That when we go out in you, Lord, that you that your anointing takes up behind and watches behind and keeps us and keeps those things that are important to us. Father, we thank you for every prayer that was prayed, everyone that we prayed for, everyone uh, ordained under the ministry that we prayed for, the, the missionaries to Brazil, that we prayed for the, uh, the, the family of the missionary that was martyred um, in Kenya, the, the pastor who lost his, his daughter through suicide. The, uh, many, many areas of need this morning and many areas of people and salvation people that need to be saved. We just thank you, Father, that you are answering our prayers. We thank you for every prayer. We thank you for the manifestation of the countless prayers we prayed in the Holy Ghost for the last several hours. We give you the glory. We give you the honor. And we thank you that the Spirit of the Lord God is upon us and has anointed us in new dimensions. I thank you, Lord, just as it came, the Spirit of the Lord came down on the day of Acts and filled them with the sign of the cloven tongues of fire. But it was more than just fire. I mean, it was more than just tongues. It was the power of the Holy Ghost upon each of them. Thank you, Jesus, to walk in the in the, in the anointing of God to set the captives free. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. They started preaching in other languages. They were preaching the acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. And we thank you for this spirit this morning. We thank you for it. Father, we thank you for our pastors in Miami. We thank you for the sixth place you have for us in Miami. We bless everyone that's partnered with us, those that we, that we miss you, that haven't been with us, haven't been able to assemble. We call you back into the, we need you. We need you. You are vital. You are a part of us. There, there's a, a, a toe missing. There's a, there's a heart missing. There's a gallbladder missing. 
When you're not with us, we feel a loss. We feel a missing. We feel something's just not quite right. So if you have been called to assemble with us, please make an attempt. Make it your goal to join us at least on Sundays. We have three services a week. Make it, you determine, you say, Lord, I'm going to vow a vow. I am going to make an irrevocable decision. I am going to be, connect with the body on a weekly basis. Uh, your life will be changed, even though it's good just being alone. You, the Bible says, all the, do not forsake assembly. All the more as you see the day approaching. And so we need you. You need us. We're one big happy family. We love you. God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And I pray that you will see yourself, that he has made you glorious, anointed you, and he's going ahead for you in these situations. You will see that the Lord Jehovah Shammah is there. Amen. We give you all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, glory to God, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus.